Welcome back to Judgment and Decision Making. Today we are talking about the illusion of understanding. Before I begin, I want you to think for yourself, are you good at making sense of events that have happened in the past? Do you think you're good at that or do you think there's room for improvement? And let's begin with the narrative fallacy, which is our tendency to look at a sequence of facts and weave them into an explanation. Begin with uh, maybe a jarring example, which is thinking about some facts about Hitler. Many of you know the events of the Holocaust, but here are some very general facts. Jews were targeted for extermination during the Holocaust, which was um, orchestrated by uh, Hitler. Germany and its collaborators prosecuted and murdered millions of Jews, ethnic Poles, Soviet civilians, Soviet prisoners of war, the Roma, the disabled, Jehovah's Witnesses, political dissidents, gay men, black Germans, and many, many others. Those are some horrific facts. And I want you to now think about the image of Hitler that you're developing in your mind right now. What is your belief about Hitler? And um, how do you picture him as an individual? Now I'm going to present some new information to you, and this has to do with this fallacy where we believe that good people only do good things and bad people are entirely bad. So imagine that I now present this fact about Hitler, that he loved dogs and babies, right? It is hard to think of Hitler as someone who could love dogs and babies, but everyone loves dogs and babies. But we've created a narrative in our mind that Hitler is entirely bad. And everything he did was horrific. He's the worst figure in modern history, absolutely. But he probably did love dogs and babies. And it's very hard for us to reconcile a horrible individual with occasionally not being that bad because he loved dogs and babies. This is also, I think, the source of some issues that people may have with the Me Too movement, where there's these famous male figures and we only learn later that they committed horrible acts. And it's very hard for someone to reconcile their like for someone's acting or their music with the horrible acts that they've committed against women. And so, especially early on in the Me Too movement, you saw all this pushback from fans of these male stars not believing women. And I think that's partly in do due to our tendency to think that if someone is likable and they make media or music or entertainment that we like, that they do good things. And they certainly couldn't do this horrible thing that an individual is accusing them of. But of course, we know that good people can do very bad things and bad people can do very good things. We're not dichotomous like that. Um, but that is not how our um, automatic decision-making system functions. We like to categorize someone as good or bad, and then we evaluate their actions in light of our categorizations of them. Now I'm going to show you a clip of an individual who has done some horrible things. And most of you, the younger people out there, probably know him exclusively for the awful acts that Bill Cosby committed. And if you're young and you did not experience any of the television or commercials that he produced, you wouldn't have the bias to categorize him as a good person that did a bad thing. You might categorize him as a bad person. And I'm going to show you a commercial. And I want you to think about how this commercial makes you feel knowing the things that Bill Cosby has done. A different way to eat jello gelatin. With our bare hands. All we need cookie cutters, this easy recipe, and we've got jigglers. Jiggle, 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 bone jigglers. Jiggle, 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 bone jigglers. <laughs> the recipe's on the box. Jigglers, they're a handful of fun. Hey, put that back. <laughs> So it can be very uncomfortable when you're confronted with a video like this with some adorable children and an individual who's done some horrible things. They're 
is inherently a conflict in our mind because our belief about someone doesn't align with the actions that we're seeing them do. And uh, here's one last example. Many of you might remember this and this individual. This is Ariana Grande and she licks a donut and um, the person she's with licks the donut too, right? So this is really just to illustrate that bad people can do good things and good people can do bad things, but that doesn't really gel with the way that we understand and categorize people. So this is the narrative fallacy that we have a tendency to look at a sequence of facts and weave them into an explanation. Another example of this is the illusion of understanding. And one of these has to do with the hindsight bias, which is where it seems like things that have occurred in the past should be predictable. This is where the phrase hindsight is 2020 comes in. And, you know, there's so many events <laughs> that this comes up in. You know, one is just thinking about the success of Google. If um, you read books today about Google, it will sound as if, of course, they were going to be successful and, you know, they did all the right things and made all the right decisions and they had the right timing. So they just had a golden path to success. But the truth is, is a lot of luck was involved in the success of this company. And there was likely other companies that didn't have as much luck. But when we look back on an event, we try to make a coherent story that would suggest that we knew all along that Google would succeed based on the information at hand. You also see this with the financial crisis of 2008, where you know after the event occurred, so many people were out there saying, you know, we should have seen this coming. I knew it was going to happen. I understood there was a bubble when really a very few people actually recognized that um, the housing crisis was was or the housing crisis was going to happen. But when we look back on it, it seems reasonable, right? If you can, you know, imagine how the housing market was inflated so significantly, it just seems so obvious. And it is almost impossible that we couldn't see that the, the housing crisis was going to happen. Well, we believe we understand the past, which implies that the future should also be knowable. But in fact, we understand the past less than we believe we do. What happens is when an unpredictable event occurs, we immediately adjust our view of the world to accommodate the surprise. And this happens all of the time. You know, anytime something new happens to you, you start to integrate that into your understanding of the world. And then it no longer seems surprising. It seems kind of reasonable. You can think about this with you know, everything we've been going through with COVID-19. We've changed our entire lives and some of these new life changes are now seeming normal. But when it first happened, it seemed like a crazy situation that we couldn't go into class or we couldn't go to the grocery store. You couldn't visit your elderly family members. But now it's honestly seeming more normal. So we are able to very immediately and quickly adjust our beliefs based on new information. And I think one of the ones I want to point out is the 2000, 2016 presidential election. You know, before 2016, if you saw this individual who was involved in pro wrestling, he, you know, had a bunch of properties, of course, but also in media, very popular um media appearances, if you were to be told in 2015 or 2012 that this person would be the president of the United States, you would never believe it. And this is kind of illustrated by many of the headlines that popped up when Trump um, put in his bid for the race. Trump says he's running for president, really. You know, there were so many of these where people just couldn't believe that it was serious. And the truth is that lots of famous people run um, for offices because it helps uh, with media, essentially. So a lot of people thought that this is what President Trump was doing, a lot of people in the Republican Party as well. And then, of course, he wins the 2016 election. 
And then you see articles like this. Everyone knew Trump would win all along. So this thing that was rather unpredictable happened. And then everyone kind of updates their understanding of the situation to think like, oh yeah, maybe I did know, maybe I could have seen it coming. And you see lots of books coming out about how, you know, it was so easy to see and now it makes perfect sense. But something else could have happened where another individual could have won and we would have made up a similar story about how, oh, of course it made sense that that individual won. The mind has an imperfect ability to reconstruct the past states of knowledge or beliefs that have been changed. It is very hard for us to imagine what we believed in the past because we have new information now. Well, because it's hard to imagine the past, we kind of reconstruct a memory of the past that isn't always accurate and believe that we understood more than we actually did at the time. And my favorite example of this is kind of in my domain of, of research. This was in 2009, there was a large earthquake in Italy um, that had lots of damage and there were six scientists that pr produced a hurricane forecast that included uncertainty. Now, the actual earthquake that happened fell within the possibilities of these scientists' forecast. They didn't fail to predict the earthquake, but they ended up getting sentenced um, and they had to serve just a small amount of time in jail because the um, people believed that they did not communicate the uncertainty effectively. They believed that it should have been easier to predict this earthquake and that scientists should have been more direct in telling people of the likelihood of the, the earthquake. Now, these scientists did correctly predict the earthquake and they told people about the uncertainty, but individuals didn't understand it correctly. And in hindsight, they thought that, you know, there was a crime in the way that these scientists communicated this information. Since then, these scientists have been acquitted um, so they are no longer serving jail sentences. But this was a big issue originally when it happened because scientists can be reluctant to communicate uncertainty in a forecast for these very reasons. Um, because when an event does occur, people that are non-scientists think it was so obvious to see. And when you communicate uncertainty, you're kind of suggesting that there's a range of possible outcomes that can occur. And people have a hard time understanding that in hindsight. Okay, summary here. Narrative fallacy is the tendency to look at a sequence of facts and weave them into an explanation or force a logical link between the events. And importantly, there's a hindsight bias, which is the tendency of people to overestimate their ability to have predicted an outcome that could not possibly have been predicted. Mm -hmm.